The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer to peer. What's up, homies? Yo, oh, buddy. Good What's morning. going up, man? How you doing? Doing good. You know, um, you guys are talking about coffee. Uh, I read a statistic that said that the all cause mortality for people that drink coffee is lower than people that don't. So, bam, there you I go. Yeah. <laughs> I think it only works though if you just happen to drink coffee. I don't. I don't think you can drink coffee to make your all-cause mortality lower. So, oh, it just happens to be that coffee drinkers. Yeah. So, what? what, what it, is there any indication as to why? No, uh, we don't. Maybe because mm. you're more awake and you don't um, fall asleep at the wheel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's that's one. Less likely to get hit by a bus crossing the street in the morning. <laughs> Things like that. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. You're a coffee guy, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I didn't used to be. It was maybe, I think it's about five years, six years ago now that I I started drinking it. Um, I was drinking like, I don't know, uh, sugary, gay, mocha latte kind of bullshit. Oh. And I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like Just drink your coffee straight and black like a man. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what, like, do you want to like have a sugary beverage or, or do you want to like enjoy the taste of coffee? I, I think it's it's worthwhile. Dude, to, uh... That Starbucks unicorn frappuccino, man, come on! <laughs> it's yeah. also a lot easier to Next order. Calories, like, yeah. <laughs> give me a give me a shot. Good to go. Give me a, an, an an americano, right? Uh, so anyways, um, yeah, sounds like you had your coffee today, man. You you sound you sound perked up today. You sound like you're oh, ready, yeah. Had a had a good night last night. Might okay. still be having a good night <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> all right, you're coming off a good night. That's so much. Uh, all right, that's good. Would you do any, anything you could reveal? Would you Would you do? Oh, you know, just had a good time. Okay, sweet. Out and about. Yeah. Socializing. So we've got price. We got to talk about price, and right now I I don't have good news for you guys. I I honestly don't. Um, this is the Monero chart. Oh, no. it, it actually looks okay. The Monero chart looks more okay than any other charts, to be honest. We kind of broke down this uh, this big rising, a very long term uh, rising support line. But I, I'm not too worried about the Monero price. Um, it's actually organically used for a lot of stuff, so um, it, it, we have like natural baseline support here. Uh, but I am kind of worried about the Bitcoin price. So this is the Bitcoin chart, and yeah, I feel like there's a lot of doom and gloom out there right now. Yeah, I mean, we, we've talked about this for a while now, um, as early as maybe March, where we said we're looking to August as the as the potential for a top here. This market needs to come explore the lower range, right? It, it needs to come and, and set some kind of support. It needs to establish probably 20K, right? It's a nice round number. Um, I, I do think that Bitcoin needs to, to go back down now at this point. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's in, in the broader context of, of where Bitcoin's been and where uh, Bitcoin and Monero are going, I, I don't think it's a big deal. You know, you just got to hodl, basically. Uh, but if you're a trader right now, opening a short probably wouldn't be that bad of, a, of an idea. So um, as we talk about a lot, I call this the wave magic, the blue line, the, the orange lines here. These are um, uh, standard deviations. So the blue lines are the upper standard deviation of price, and then the orange lines are the lower standard deviation. And then the white lines are the moving average. So again, it's arbitrary. Like, do you want to choose the 50 day moving average or the 21 day? It's it's arbitrary. So you just overlay all of them at the same time. And this is what pops out when when you do that. Um, something I created a, a couple years ago. And uh, it's it's actually it's kind of beautiful. I, I really like the way it looks. I, it when it when I programmed this into trading view, I was very surprised that um that this popped out. So, anyways, right now, if we're gonna talk about wave magic, we're gonna talk about um, standard deviation levels. We're basically below the um, the near term standard deviation, uh, lower standard deviation. This is not good price action. This is not what you want to see if if you're gonna try and take a long. Um, you kind of got this weird little like uh, W pattern going on right now. Like so, it's kind of um. So actually, let's uh, let's rewind here a little bit. Um, we had this W pattern back in December. Sorry, these charts take a, a little bit of time to move. That's like the only problem with it because uh, TradingView doesn't quite have the resources. Okay, so what you can see here is this this W pattern that that we had back in November, December that that formed. Oh, I got I got to clear this. It's taking too long. Okay, 
So we kind of had this W pattern right here that formed. Um, we have something similar happening right now, but it's it's a much smaller uh, time frame. Right? It's a much smaller period. So the it you would think okay maybe this could this could go up and maybe it can, but right now my odds again are are on the short side here. I don't think that price is um I don't think price is doing anything good right now. I think that this is actually weakness at the moment. You can see that this is kind of like slowly descending, and at some point it's likely that the bottom is going to fall out on that one. Um, this one right here, you can see that was kind of rising, right? When this W pattern was forming and we were worried about, could we go lower right around this area? We said, nah, no, nah, no, it's, it, this is strength. Like it, things are probably about to bounce. So just know if you're a trader to, to be careful here with, uh, with Bitcoin, don't be taking any crazy big longs. Um, the signals aren't entirely so in, in terms of the macro, the signals are not entirely uh, congruent at the moment. So we have, for example, the dollar is is, is going up. The dollar index is, is rising and it's been rising, uh, which is kind of what we've expected. Um, however, if we look at the reverse repos, that has been dropping. Right. So for the past two, uh, two weeks, yeah, two weeks for the past two weeks, uh, this has been falling. Now, the reverse repos, again, are money that's stored overnight with the Fed. And they get um, minus 0.1% um, to the federal funds rate uh, for keeping their money there. So when money is leaving the reverse repos, that means it's going somewhere. And right now, I'm, I'm not quite entirely certain where this money is going. Um, 1.82 trillion down to one. So $300 billion have left the reverse repo market. And I'm not quite sure where that's gone. Um, I think I'm kind of like, I have a hesitant uh, commodity cycle theory at the moment. I do think um, it's possible that money is going into commodities right now. Um, I was really hoping that we would get some kind of clarity uh, in, in the stock market, in the macro, in the, in the big picture. I was really hoping we'd get some kind of clarity um, by the end of the week, but we, we kind of haven't. Um, so this is the NASDAQ right here. I would like to call this a head and shoulders. But we're not quite there. Like you see this horizontal support um, or resistance. It's hard to say which it is. It's a horizontal line of significance um, that was kind of uh, after after the big blow off uh, top. That was like the place that price came back to and then and then fell from there. So that's why this horizontal line exists here. You can see it was actually important there. And it's still like it's still kind of important here. So. I would like to call this a head and shoulders, but we can't, it's not confirmed. We can't call that a uh, head and shoulders just quite yet. If this thing breaks down next week, that's, that's a pretty clear sign to get out of the market. Like you don't want to be risk on if this thing breaks down. Um, that's, that's like kind of the last confirmation I was hoping. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't hope that people, you know, would lose money and the market would go down, but I was kind of hoping to see some clarity here by the end of the week. And that's, that's not really what happened. So, um, yeah, we've, we've got money going somewhere. I'm not quite sure where exactly at the moment. Um, so let's take a look at the transactions. Monero transactions has just been flat, but there was something I wanted to cover with the Bitcoin transactions. Uh, so let's uh, get rid of the Monero ones. All right. Bitcoin is now doing somewhere between 600, 700, 500,000 transactions. These are ordinals. Half of the transaction volume on Bitcoin is now um, inscriptions. Um, Crazy. The, yeah, yeah, right. Wow. A bunch of you know what's happening is people are minting a bunch of fucking NFTs that they're gonna sell on the next bull market. Like when when the shit goes parabolic again, there's gonna be a lot of value there. That might actually I know it's it's kind of weird to say, but that might actually be something that uh, helps support Bitcoin's price. Uh, my theory is of course that Ethereum's gonna gain market cap parity in the next bull market. Um I say parity because you know I'm I'm being a coward. Obviously, the flipping is is the more <laughs> is the more cheeky way to say it. So one thing that um, I've, I've done some calculations and um, Jameson Lopp sent me a, uh, a transaction size calculator. And so if everyone was actually like, hypothetically, if everyone was using um, Taproot, then you could probably stuff about a million transactions a day on Bitcoin, um, like in the most ideal case. So um, all these ordinals obviously involve Taproot. Um, which is a more efficient way of doing the transaction, but then of course they're um, you know they're <laughs> putting a lot of data into the uh, into the inscription part of that transaction into the segregated witness uh, part of that transaction. So, um, anyways, 
maybe it's a, a slight correction from from something that I've said before, uh, which was that Bitcoin could do maybe 300,000, 400,000 transactions per day. Um, it, it's actually closer to a million in the in the best ideal case. Um, so, so trend. I mean, yeah, you always hear the the metric of like you know Bitcoin can do like whatever seven to forty transactions per second or something. So you're saying it's it's much much more given taproot. Yeah, like hypothetically, it, it, it could be significantly more than than seven transactions per second. Maybe I don't know, maybe like fourteen. Personally, I don't I don't like using the transactions per second metric because that's that's like in in my human brain that doesn't compute, right? I'm like, okay, far out, bro. Like, how many transactions per second can we do here? Um, but when I hear transactions per day, that tells me how many people can access the network, right? So right now, when we talk about Bitcoin's doing seven hundred. Well, 500 to 700,000 transactions per day. That That's a number that makes more sense to, to my monkey brain. Um, and obviously per year, it's it's um, it's about 100 million, but uh, I think it can actually go, like theoretically, the cap could actually be much higher. It could be like 300, uh, about 300 million. So um, let's see. A buddy of mine recommended that we show the uh, the Monero notes looking about uh, 27,000 right now, 26,853. Uh, so yeah, cool. And, oh, I, I don't think there was much else to, to talk about here. Um, oh, uh, a chart that I that I came up with recently is to multiply gold by the dollar index. Um, normally, you divide things, right? You say, okay, well, what was what's the M2SL, right? What's the M2 money supply? You might divide that to try and get a better look at how something performed relative to inflation. Um, but in this case, what we do is we multiply the dollar index by uh, by gold, because when the dollar is is rising, you expect that gold is probably going to drop, right? It's it's anti correlated. So what we're doing here, the reason we multiply the the two together is because it gives you the biggest broadest picture about how well gold is doing over the long term uh, relative to that anti correlation. So um, right now, like I mean, gold has continued to perform, and honestly, like I, I say this a lot. I do think that gold is probably the place you want to be. You, if you're trying to preserve your capital, if you're trying to wait things out to the next bull market, I, I think you should you should definitely have a significant allocation into gold. It's probably not going to perform tomorrow, but it's going to keep your value. Like it's it's actually a store of value. Um, so I, I think that um, I think there's the overall the broad theme that I'm tentatively coming to is is that I, I think we've got a commodity cycle coming up. Um, for maybe the next, let's just say one to one to three to four, six months, something like that. Um, I think crypto is going to come back. I think that uh, risk on will happen again. But at the moment, I it's dubious. Like it, it could, it's it the the fat lady hasn't sung here. <laughs> like we could still we could still see another higher high uh, in crypto. We could hypothetically still see another higher high in stocks. But for the moment, um, I that's not a risk I'm I'm I want to take. So uh, basically, I'm in Monero, my hodl. Uh, and I'm in gold right now. So that would be my uh, the, the, uh, certified financial advice bros. Um, sue me. <laughs> yeah. If you can find me. <laughs> sue me from Mexico. Getting, good luck getting my Monero, which I lost in a boating accident. Exactly. Mm. So, yeah, that's the, right. uh, that's the price port today. I'm seeing a, a lot of gloom and doom in, in Bitcoin land with regards to... Uh, the uh you know potentially needing to add a tail emission right the 21 million cap mm. i'm seeing that yeah, top i feel top like um right now i think the bitcoin bros right now are struggling through the realization that lightning is not doing what they thought it would do so now they have to argue about um what's the next software to do a six-year experiment um I, I feel like they they, they know this they intuit this and um, so right now, is it CTV? Is it going to be uh, drive chains? Right? No, nobody knows. And honestly, I don't think anything's going to get forked in. There's no consensus for them to do anything. And, and as long as they're arguing about it, there's no chance they're going to fork anything in. Um, now, if like someone like Jameson Lop or um, you know Adam Back or, or Blockstream, if these guys came out and said, "Hey, let's let's go this direction," then everyone would just fall fall behind them, um, which is fine. Like, I mean, you need you need leaders, right? Um, Sure, but at the moment, no. Like, yeah, there's, they're they're just gonna continue arguing on Twitter <laughs> about what to do. And do you think there's any any potential movement towards 
increasing the block size in Bitcoin? Um, I'm trying to be part of that push, man. I'm, I really am. I, I, Bitcoin hash, like I, in, in, in large part, I agree with the, the general ideas like network effects, shelling points, stuff like that. Um, I'd like to see them raise the blocks because Bitcoin could actually be a good thing. Like it just needs to upgrade. Um, and, and, and maybe the problem is that they're not going to upgrade until after they see Ethereum flip. And then they're going to feel the sense of urgency that I feel right now. Um, by, by then it'll be too late. Like they're, they're just like, when you have a product on the market, you have an opportunity. There's a window of opportunity for a new product to, to capture the network effects, to capture the market. And if it doesn't, um, then it's, you know, it, it's just not going to. Um, so it's, I mean, it's Ethereum, man. Like that's, that's where everything's going. Um, it makes sense. It, it's in, in a broad sense. Um, you can, you can program anything onto it. Um, so and they, they just have the opportunity to iterate faster with a lot of different projects. And sure, there's a lot of like bullshit scams. <laughs> um, but ultimately, the things that actually work are going to rise. That cream is going to rise to the top. Um, so and what's cool, though, is we, we've we've got uh, we've got atomic swaps with Ethereum. So um, Tornado Cash, that whole saga is it's not looking good. Right. So the privacy layer, the fungibility layer of Ethereum is, is going to be a Monero. And I just, uh, I don't think Bitcoin is going to be part of that conversation. Um, it is now, right? It sounds silly to say that at the moment, but um, it, it, going into the future, it's going to be Monero and Ethereum. What role do you see Bitcoin playing in the future? Nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> Pet rock. That's crazy that... Uh... Almost half of Bitcoin transactions are just ordinals. That's like, yeah, it's going to be a lot of people making a lot of money on those ordinals. That's some the bloat, next, uh... man, especially at a chain that can't handle it. But are, 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 are there a lot of people that are excited about the, other than the ordinals being great for, you know, trying to make money off of some stupid NFT? Are there a lot of people excited about? the fact that it is increasing usage of Bitcoin or there's more concern that it's just taking up block space? What is kind it's of... Uh, I think it's half and half right now. It's So the reality is that you can do some pretty be, cool there stuff be with inscription. Right? Because it's, it's giving miners more, right? Potentially more incentive to mine, right? Potentially solving that problem oh, of, of the... You know what? That's a good point. Um, yeah, like the, the way that ordinals are playing out might actually prolong the... Um, Oh, mining the, the problem that they have, right? Yeah, it seems like the solution. I feel like eventually it's going to die out more, though. Because it's, I mean, most of the use that I've seen for it is just to, like, sell and try to make money off of these NFTs and playing the market with them. So I, uh, it's not, like, real utility. I'm kind of worried, honestly, about the um, the hash power at the moment. Um, so miners are all of them are mining at a loss at this moment mm -hmm. and they need that they're they're doing it under the expectation that price will rise but then the halvening is going to hit next year so they're they're going to take a 2x hit on their profits and they're already unprofitable so yeah. what happens if bitcoin doesn't make a significant higher high like i i have a, a very 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 tentative thesis right now that bitcoin could double top um at 70k that's probably what's going to happen it's going to double top um, and then take some time to wash out it, and establish a higher floor, maybe let's just say 50 K. Right. But it's, that's, that's a years long kind of event. So what happens to all that hash power that's currently unprofitable, that's going to be half as profitable starting next year. I may, maybe the NFTs, the ordinals can save them, <laughs> right? Maybe that can, that could, that could help them. But, um, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, it's, it's a problem. I think it's a problem. Yeah, and it, it's. I feel like a, it's um, something a lot of people are talking about right now in Bitcoin land. People are yeah. are, are finally waking up to it. I, I feel like we've been talking about it forever here in Monero, uh, right? <laughs> like dynamic block sizes, tail emission. I, I mean, there's a lot of research out there. Ethereum implemented um, it was E E I P something with some number fifteen hundred something. Um, yeah, the Ethereum implemented some kind of protection uh, against uh, long-term risk in, in terms of like having enough um, 
reward for the miners. Like they they implemented uh, some kind of protocol. I don't really understand it, but uh, it, they 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 specifically addressed it, and Bitcoin still hasn't addressed it. So I I, I don't think that these guys are dumb. Like I don't think they would have done that in, unless it, it might really truly be a concern. Um, I I don't know. I guess we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I feel like uh, we'll be touching upon this again later in the show because of some of the news topics. Um, Body, cool. Thanks so much, man. Hit, stick around, please, if you can. Thank you. Love yeah, you guys. Body, great financial yeah. advice as always. <laughs> <laughs>